What's up everybody? Welcome to a fresh video here on the Blue Abroad YouTube channel. It's good to be back recording regular content again. Now today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my personal top five favorite moments as a Carlton supporter. So these are a series of games or five games that have happened in, in my memory, in my lifetime um, that really stick out and I guess that are at the top of the tree. Now, I will preface this by saying like I was born in 1991, so I don't really remember the 95 grand final. I remember watching it, you know, on tape or on, on video, um, you know, many years later, 1999, the preliminary final against the Bombers. I don't, I do remember it, but I don't really remember it like I do these five games that I'm about to talk to you about. Um, so there are a few bits and pieces there that you need to know. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to ask you to fill in your top five favorite moments as a Carlton supporter in the comments below. And I really want to see what everyone's memory is like, because I think it'll also tell us what era you were born in and, and you know, what you've seen and, and how much success you've seen. And then the next part to this video will be my my top five worst moments as a Carlton supporter. And when I was preparing for that, oh, I could, could have done a top 20, to be honest. But anyway, we're talking about the positives today. Um, I'm going to start off with number five. Now, this is a little random. However, the, the game was in 2010 and it was round five. It was a Monday and we played against Geelong. And, and we beat them. And, and the reason why this one, you know, rated so highly for me was because we had only started really, you know, rising the year before. 2009, we made finals with this, you know, this new group, this Murphy, Gibbs, Cruiser, Judd. And at the time, I remember I was, I think it was 18 or 19 years old. And it was, it felt right. It felt like at some point we needed to get a win against one of these great teams um, in order to really solidify, oh, you know, we're going in the right direction. And now Geelong, I don't care what anyone says, the Ge you know, the great Geelong dynasty, that's the best team I've seen in my lifetime. Maybe the Lions as well, but I, I think, I think you know, the Geelong team, you know, in this period of, of, um, of, of AFL history were just the best. And we had a knack of playing well against them, but we just couldn't get the job done. But on this particular day, nobody necessarily stood out. I mean, you know, you had Carrazzo, he had 28 on the day and, and Judd had 27 on the day. And, um, you know, we had a few others like Simo had his 24, Scotland had his 26. They, they, they were just even contributors all around. And and we did a number on them and, and we, got the, we got the job done. Um, we actually beat them by 36 points. And it was, I think it was, it was so exciting because we had, you know, started moving forward and it started looking like it was coming together and to beat Geelong on this day. I know it's a random game, but I, I, I never, I'll never forget the moment after the game where I was like, oh, okay, this group, this is an important win. And I felt like it was a premiership defining win because I was convinced that we were going to win the premiership with this group. So um, that was an important one that came in at number five at number four. It's the infamous game against the Essendon football club in 2007, the 48 point comeback. Now my memory isn't very clear, but I do remember being at this game. I remember I was, I was 16 years old, uh, 16. I had just turned 17. I think it was, yeah, it was in, it was right near my birthday. And I remember I've never left the footy early ever. It's just something I've never done. Um, it's something I stand by. I've sat through beltings before and this game was looking just like that. Um, and I remember contemplating at the time, like, oh, do we just cut my losses and, and just leave? And it was, it was uh, towards the end of the second quarter, but you know, you got to stick around. It is what it is. And I just remember, I just remember getting towards the, the start of the fourth quarter and and it was weird because I, I remember never really feeling like we were going to lose, but I it, that was due to my naivety and uh, just being young and confident and whatever. I was just happy to yap whenever I could. Um, but when we actually hit the front and it actually started getting real, that's when it started becoming unbelievable. Like the 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 notion of coming back from a forty eight point deficit didn't really hit me until we were in front and. You know, Brendan Favola on this day was, you know, he did he did what Fev does, and um, that was a very important period in in my experience as a supporter because he just 
put bums on seats and you went to the footy knowing that he was going to put on a show, especially against the Bombers and Collingwood. He always had a knack of playing well and rising to the occasion. And he actually didn't start this game very well. I don't think he kicked a goal, kicked a goal in the first quarter and a half and then he just exploded. So he kicked eight on the day at the end and it was just it was just phenomenal. And I just remember the roar of the crowd when we first hit the front and then the confidence of the crowd when we knew we were going to win. It was a, a very special day. Um, as I said, my memory of it, you know, from start to finish isn't totally there, but I have enough of it, um, to remember that, that special, special day. Number three is the Richmond final in 2013. Now for, for a lot of us, this is number one. I've spoken to a lot of people. I ask supporters all the time, you know, what's your favorite moment? And they'll say the Richmond final. And the reason for, for, for me personally, why this game and this moment comes in at number three is look, We were not supposed to be there. We were there in finals on a technicality, which is what made it so special, but it's also what probably ranks it a little little lower on this list. Now, in terms of crowd impact and noise and energy, this is by far the, you know, at the top, number one. I've never in my life heard noise like what I heard in this game. Um, and this one was also special. This was the this was a game I took my my younger brother, who's ten and a half years younger than me, and I took him to this game. It was he and I. It was his first final, and I remember telling him, you know, Chris, you got to get used to this. You know, this is this is what we do. <laughs> this is who we are. You know, we've had a little bit of a lean period. This is the real combination of the rebuild, and you've got to start getting used to this. You know, these big crowds, and I thought it was really special. You know, you you know, going to the footy with your siblings. Well, for me, that's. That's the most special thing. That's, that's, you know, the happy place. So I remember that we were sitting one bay to the right of the Richmond cheer squad. And I remember this feeling of weird confidence because Richmond at the time was still in that, you know, ninth man, still a laughing stock. They were not the Richmond that we know in 2021 who have gone on to win, you know, multiple premierships. There was still this little bit of, This little bit of, oh, if anyone's going to lose it, it's going to be Richmond. But they came out hot. They were up by, I think it was five goals at halftime. I remember Trent Cochin kicks a goal just on the halftime siren. And they're up and about. And, you know, there was this feeling of, ah, oh, well, we weren't meant to be here anyway. It was a bit of a free hit. and I think I just went to that game hoping for just something. Didn't expect to win. But then the third quarter happens and we start really getting in front. I think Heath Scotland got us going. And then, you know, obviously Nick Dygan definitely got us going on that day. And then there's, you know, the moment, you know, Chris Judd kicks the goal. And that was on the other side of the ground to where I was. And, ah, uh, you know, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget exactly that entire moment, even though I was, you know, over a hundred or more, 150, 200 meters away from the actual spot where he kicked the ball I'll never forget how loud I screamed you know into the air it was like an out of body experience and uh, I've got goosebumps thinking about it now to be honest and I've never heard noise like that as I said before and that was a very very special moment and just a special day and there was a buzz and you know all of a sudden we're going to Sydney and um, that was really cool number two was 2011 and this was this was the Essendon final in 2011. Now, this one, as I mentioned before with the, with the Geelong game, you know, we were building and, you know, 20, 2009, we had made the finals for the first time in a while. You know, we lost, you know, in a heartbreaking uh, manner against the Lions. 2010, we got there again. Then we lost to the Sydney Swans, pretty heartbreaking again. 2011 was the real year at start. You know, we had a bit of heartbreak behind us as well. And I always... F- I talk about it a lot, you know, in order to succeed, you need to fail. And we had done the failure for a few years. And, you know, Mark Murphy had really emerged in 2011. Judd had won the Brownlow the year before. Um, But Murphy was the important one because he had elevated himself to a point where, I'm not kidding, for those who don't remember, like Murphy was genuinely a top five player in the league. You know, if it wasn't Dane Swan as the best midfielder in the league, it probably was Mark Murphy in 2011. He was that good. And so when we had, you know, the next player with Judd, you know, we had a little bit more confidence in the middle and everyone was humming along. Obviously at this time, um, you know, we didn't have Favola, but, you know, we'll figure, we, we figured out a way um, to make it work and we we're playing some really good footy. And, you know, we had, um, you know, the Bombers, it was the Bombers. And, you know, in 2011, I was, 
I was 20 years old and you know that that's a real hot spot you know the rivalry with your friends and your dickhead Essendon supporters who you love talking shit to and they get under your skin you get under their skin and I remember we kicked quite a few behinds to start this game and I remember they kicked the first three goals of the game and I remember them being up and about and I remember thinking oh my god not today not like this you know not like this, you know, they, I, I remember, I remember feeling deep in my bones that we were the better team, you know, you know, both teams at their best, you know, we were the better team. We had just beaten them convincingly only a month beforehand. Um, you know, that was the, the infamous Andrew Walker, you know, mark of the millennium that was never given mark of the year. And I remember, and then earlier in that year, I think we drew to them as well. So, you know, the rivalry was there and then we just went on and absolutely made a meal of them. You know, we won by 10 goals. Um, everyone was just up and about. Gibbs had a really good game that day, I remember, and he hurt himself and he didn't play. He didn't play the week after against uh, the West Coast Eagles. Judd didn't really dominate on that day, but, you know, he took that, um, you know, that big mark that uh, has the, the great Bruce McAvaney commentary. And, and I'll never forget walking out of the ground on that day thinking, oh, We've done it, you know. We've 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 won the final because with the group at the time, we hadn't won a final yet. So you know that was a very special feeling, knowing we had conquered the you know the demon so to speak, and and that was a very good day. And then my number one moment. I mean, I've 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 given I've listed two final wins here, but my number one moment. And you know, if you've watched this channel and you've got to know me a little bit more deeply than those who don't watch, you'll know. This is my, you already know what game I'm going to talk about, but this was my number one favorite moment as a Carlton supporter, without a doubt. The, the, the feeling I got on this night was, has been unparalleled and it was round three, 2012. Now we've just come off a heartbreaking loss to the West Coast Eagles in the 2011 final. That would have put us in a prelim and, you know, some serious heartbreak and, you know, 2012 came along and it was a, it was really like, okay. We need, you know, we, we've done the the thing now that we need to do in terms of win a final. And then going into 2012, it was like, all right, no more excuses. That's it. We're ready. We've got the battle scars. We need to really surge up and, you know, get into the top four or, you know, get right up there with these premiership contenders. And we started 2012 hot. We belted Richmond round one. We belted the Lions in round two. And then we came up against Collingwood in round three. Now, Collingwood were at the peak of their powers. This was this was peak Collingwood. You know, Mick Malthouse was coaching. They had Daisy Thomas in his peak form. You know, Dane Beams, Pendlebury, Swan, Cloak, um, Reed. They were all you know side bottom. You know, peak Collingwood. And you know, as much as much as we love to give shit to Collingwood, you know, this was a great Collingwood team. And it was the test because it was there were there were two wins that we had where we were a little bit like, oh, I don't, okay, where are the Blues really at? And, um, it was a Friday night and I just never forget it. I just, I'll never forget it. And it's crazy because man, this was 10, nearly 10 years ago. I, I, I don't even know where the time's gone, but I remember every moment like it was yesterday and we came out hard. We got on top early. Then the pies came back at us in the second quarter. And I thought, uh, oh, well, you know, there it is. Well, you know, we gave them our best shot, but we were, we were just, we were physical. We were hard. We were tough. We played with this confidence and, I remember Eddie Betts absolutely ran rings around um, Heretia Lumumba. At the time, he was still Harry O'Brien. Um, but Eddie Betts just like, you know, Heretia, he, he had no idea what to do with him on the night. He had absolutely no idea what to do with Eddie Betts on the night. And um, I remember Mark Murphy had an unbelievable game. I think it was like it was like 35 touches or something like that with two goals. And he, he gave the, the Collingwood cheer squad the finger. He kicked a goal on the goal square. It was just unreal. And the reason why it is the number one moment for me personally is because of the feeling afterwards. Now, obviously, as Carlton supporters, we're always you know looking for a little bit of hope. And we get a little bit and we think, that's it. We're making finals or we're winning a flag. But guys... I've had to convince people like over and over again, ever since this moment, like we were absolutely winning the flag in 2012. I don't care what anyone says. That moment, that night we had beaten Collingwood. We were playing such good footy. It's so crazy. It's such a Carlton supporter thing to be saying after three games, three good games. 
Um, but that feeling walking out of the MCG on that Friday night, I'll never forget in my life where I was like, oh my God, we're, we're going to win the flag. Um, but it's not like when I, when you say it to your mates and you know, you're taking the piss, like genuinely in my soul, I believe we were winning the flag because we had shown how good we could be. Now, unfortunately, 2012 was just a disaster after that night, really. Carazzo hurt his, um, his collarbone against the Bombers not long after, thanks to that drug cheat lawn again. I'll never forgive him for that. Um, this was the year that Murphy ran into Dangerfield and shattered his collarbone and and then it all just unraveled from there. And then, you know, Ratten got the sack later in the year and it was just a disaster. But anyway, that moment that night was my number one and I'll never forget it. And, you know, there, there is there is something to be said about my top five because it's quite sad because there's nothing post 2011, 2012, I should say, you know, so I'm hoping to have some more great memories with this current group and feel a real connection with them. And I'm hoping 2022 is the, is the year that we start doing that. Um, but anyway, those are my top five favorite moments as a Carlton supporter. Uh, I want to know about yours. Please leave a comment below. Give me your top five favorite moments as a supporter, whether you were at the game or whether you, were, you know, whether you were not at the game. And uh, I'm really interested to see what shaped your experience as a supporter. And I think we'll be able to tell a little bit more about ourselves when we look at everyone's top five. So get in the comments and I'll chat to you soon.